All right, let me now go across to former diplomat Prabhu Dayal, who's joining us here on the show. Prabhu Dayal, many thanks for speaking with NDTV. Yeah. Sir, first of all, uh, what are uh, the, the, kind, the chances that you see as a diplomat, uh, former diplomat who's engaged with various countries? Uh, the tone and the tenor of the first session, uh, does it give you a sense that there might be a possibility of a joint communique being adopted here in the foreign minister's meeting, unlike what we saw in the finance minister's meeting in Bengaluru last week? Well, you know, Maha, I have always believed that diplomacy is the art of the possible. And to me, it seems very difficult that a joint communique will be arrived at. Uh, you will recall that at the meeting of the finance ministers of the G20 countries, which was held last week, no communique was issued, no joint communique was found possible. And not much has changed since then. If at all, the positions of the rival camps have only hardened. And by the rival camps, I mean the United States and its Western allies on one side and Russia and China on the other. So I don't expect that there will be common language which will be agreed upon in terms of a joint communique. But in any case, our Prime Minister in his speech clearly said that the emphasis of India's presidency will be the requirements, the needs and the priorities of the Global South. He said that India's G20 presidency is for the Global South. And uh, he once again emphasized the importance of Vasudev Kutumbakam. And therefore, I don't think that divisive issues... Uh, Prabhu will Dayal, really I'll, come I'll, I'll just interrupt you there, sir, because why I raised this question with you was the Prime Minister himself, uh, India holds the presidency, and the top leader of uh, the country then addresses the foreign ministers, urging them to set aside their differences and come to a path where there can be a common ground found. Do you think this kind of, uh, you know, putting his thoughts forward, urging these member countries to work together, do you think that will put the kind of pressure that India would like to, uh, to get all the countries going? And therefore, I asked you, whether it appears that a joint communique might be possible now, unlike uh, the finance minister's meeting, also because one of the objections which I understand from my sources that Russia really had was that the entire onus of uh, the global economy going wrong was being put on the Ukraine war. And they had an objection to that. There are many other reasons they believe for it too. Therefore, do you think that China and Russia, I mean, Russia backed by China, have made their point? in the finance minister's meeting and should ideally move forward now in the foreign minister's meeting? Well, ideally that should be the situation. Ideally, they should set aside divisive issues and the prime minister said so in his remarks today. He urged that divisive issues should not be allowed to come in the way and that the G20 countries should focus on areas which really matter in terms of this meeting and such issues will naturally include terrorism and climate change and of course the economic issues such as uh, the slowdown in the global economy, uh, the uh, problems relating to food and energy shortage, the inflation which stares the world in the face and of course the issue of development cooperation. So I really wish that a common agenda, a common joint communique could be arrived okay. at, which will focus on these issues. The problem okay. is, how do the other countries okay. view it? That's the issue. Hmm. All right.